Good morning. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes with the word. I'm Barry Bryson, and we're going to uh, continue our study of the Gospel of Matthew by finishing chapter 10 um, and go through chapter 11, verse 1, uh, which is the end of the missionary sermon. So let's read these verses. I'm going to pick up with verse 34, uh, and I'm going to read through chapter 11, verse 1. Do not think that I have come to bring peace to earth. I have not come to bring peace, but a sword. For I have come to set a man against his father, a daughter against her mother, and a daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. And a person's enemies will be those of his own household. Whoever loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And whoever does not take up the, his cross and follow me is not worthy of me. Whoever finds his life will lose it, and whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Whoever receives you receives me, and whoever receives me receives him who sent me. The one who receives a prophet because he is a prophet will receive a prophet's reward, and the one who receives a righteous person because he is a righteous person will receive a righteous person's reward. And whoever gives one of these little ones even a cup of cold water because he is a disciple. Truly I say to you, he will by no means lose his reward. When Jesus had finished instruction, his 12 disciples, instructing his 12 disciples, he went on from there to teach and preach in their cities. Okay, so after he sends them off, he goes off himself to preach on his own. Not that there weren't other disciples following him. I assume that there were, but the 12 are not there, those 12 closest associates. They're off on their preaching tour, and we're not going to see them again until right before the feeding of the 5,000. This is difficult, uh, this, this whole section. How do you reconcile verse 34 uh, and following with what Jesus says in John 14, 27? I come to bring you peace, not as the world gives. Well, he doesn't bring peace as the world gives. And I think that peace as the world gives, which means not necessarily completeness or calm or equilibrium, rightness with God, but the absence of conflict between human beings, that's not going to happen because of Jesus. It's just not. Um, Jesus requires the making of a decision. There are only two ways to go, the way that leads to eternal life and the way that does not. And you have to decide which road you're going to be on. And in deciding that, you decide to walk a different path from most other people. And there's a real connection in this section of the sermon with the last sermon, the eschatological sermon. Because in that sermon, we have the image of two that are working together, one taken, the other left behind, two at a well, one taken, the other left behind, the other left behind, two in a bed together one taken, the other left behind, and a real sorting out and a separation of, 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 of intimacy, of intimacies between people because of the choices they have made during life here on earth. And so we have that. <coughs> and he makes it clear that our relationship with him has to be primary. And we can't love anyone more than we love him. We, we just can't if we're going to follow him and, and be his disciple. Of course, if we love him more than anyone else, then the love that we have for others will be better than the love we have to offer otherwise. It's the most loving thing we can do for anybody to love Jesus most of all. And he says, he who um, finds his life will lose it. He who loses his life for my sake will find it. That's a life lesson, period. We're here to present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. And to make sure we understand what he means, he says, if you are not willing to take up your cross daily, let me rephrase that, take up your cross. He says daily in Luke's gospel in a different context, but he just says, take up your cross and, you're, you, and follow me. You're not worthy of me. Now, we are on this side of the cross event they are not on the same side as we are. They're on the other side of the cross event. They don't know he's going to die on a cross yet. To them, that's like the electric chair, you know. I mean, it's the, it's the terrible, terrible way to die. 
you know, to be cooked alive. Well, you're going to be strangled alive, really. I mean, that's death on a cross. And, um, and it's the worst way to die that they know of. And he says, if you're not willing to pick up your cross and carry it for me, you're not worthy of me. I mean, that's as um, honest, as brutally honest as he can be, and he has to be. And he's being that brutally honest with them as well as he is with us. And then he says, listen, you're me and I'm you, and I'm God, and I'm the one who unites you to God. The way people treat you is the way they treat me. And the way they treat me is the way they treat God. And that's going to also connect us with <clears throat> the eschatological sermon because he uses the same phrase, and as much as you have done it for the least of these, my brethren, you've done it for me. Most people think, or just assume, these little ones mean children, but we're not told there are any children there. I think little ones is, is, is an affectionate way of saying, you know, my people, you know, my, 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 my disciples. And, and, and he says, um, if you treat my people badly you've treated me badly and that will be judged and that's how he ends that sermon and it's it's quite um uh it's not a spoonful of sugar i mean it's not i mean it's not a mary poppins song um it's it's, it's quite um realistic it he is expecting us to be grown-ups and to be realistic about the way the world actually is and about who we actually are in it and to have our heads in the game and to know ahead of time what he's told us is going to be true, but also what he's given to us cannot be taken away. And we're not prepared to go out and do anything until we get that straight, which is what he has done for them and for us in the missionary sermon in, in Matthew chapter 10. Well, we'll pick up with chapter 11, Jesus is separated from his apostles for a while. Thank you for joining me for another five good minutes.